Psalm chapter 118. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Verily, 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 verily. It's not the first responders. It's not our government. It's not us. It's not my church. Give thanks unto the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. I think Paul says, rejoice evermore. Problem is, many people rejoice evermore. Many people give thanks unto anything but God. For he, God, is good. That's an interesting statement because I can tell you what I know. I'm in a public ministry, and as many times I've heard in my ministry, people come up to me, well, I'm good. Well, I'm good. So are you equaling yourself to God? I ought to thank you. You're not the good of the good that God is good. When the Bible says there is none that doeth good, no, not one. But God is good. Because, well, we got a four, he is good. Let's thank the Lord for he is good. Because, let's give thanks for he's good. Let's give thanks he's good. And because he's good, his mercy endureth forever. The mercy of God doesn't stop. Unless, you die in rebellion against the word of God and you end up in a lake of fire that burns forever. Then you have no mercy because you have rejected what God has told you to do to retire and gain his mercy forever. Don't you blame God when you are swimming in a lake of fire and there's no mercy because it's your own stupid fault. Let Israel, as the nation, now say that his mercy endureth forever. It'd be nice if they did say that. As a nation, they're not. Let the house of Aaron, there's the priest, now say, now, that his mercy endureth forever. They don't even know who the house of Aaron is right now, today. Now, when the psalmist wrote, but when Jesus Christ comes back and settles up New Jer uh, Jerusalem and Israel and puts the Jews in their promised land, you better believe the house of Israel will say his mercy endureth forever. You better believe the priest will say his mercy endureth forever. Why? Because they are in the promised land and all the enemies of the Jews have been put down. God ain't finished with Israel. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endure forever. You fear the Lord? That verse can go down in the church age. God's mercy endure forever. You're going to heaven by God's mercy. You got that job because of God's mercy. Your family is well and healthy because of God's mercy. All right, your family's sickly and, and, and has bad health. It could be worse. God's mercy endures forever. I mean, what if God treated the church age like he treated the nation of Israel in the wilderness? What if God sent fiery serpents amongst your church building? What if your pastor got up Sunday morning and offered the wrong sacrifice? <clears throat> Fire come down from heaven. That'd be nice. That'd eliminate the false prophets, but God's mercy. I, 
New paragraph, I called upon the Lord in distress. You mean you didn't call on a friend, you didn't call on your pastor, you didn't call on a doctor, you didn't call on a lawyer? I called on the Lord. There's nothing wrong with going to a doctor, there's nothing wrong with a lawyer. Did you go to God first? Remember the first commandment? God first? That goes with troubles and problems. The Lord answered me and sent me in a large place. God answered. God took care of me. Now these aren't just words. This is the psalmist saying, hey, listen, I was in trouble. What would you do? I called on the Lord. What happened? God answered me. And he put me in a wide open space. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I've got God. Coronavirus. Got a mask? Got, nope, I got God. The riots and all that. You, I got God. What can men do to me? Oh, they can kill you. And if you're saved, absent from the body, present with the Lord. You can lose all your possessions. And yet, how many Christians have lost their possessions? What possessions did would the Apostle Paul have? He told one, he said, just bring some parchments, and some books, I think it was. Paul, in the end of the book of Romans, had his own higher house. He didn't have a house. He rented a house. Man, a lot of pastors are doing a lot better than what Paul had. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. And that's true for the sheep nations that help Israel. And they don't even know what they did during the tribulation period that God took part and said, come on in the millennium. Lord, what do you mean we helped them? What do you mean we went to prison to visit? What do you mean we, we took care of you? When you did it until least of mine. And they don't even know what they did. They haven't read Matthew. And one of the prophets say, there's coming a time, there's coming a famine of the word of God in the Bible. Keep on raising the kids in the school system without the Bible, without God. And that time's coming up very quick. Have churches today that don't even have the Bible or don't even have the correct Bible. Therefore shall I see my desire upon that hate me. He's saying, I'm going to win. My enemies are not going to win. And then the goat nations go off in the lake of fire that burns forever. All nations can pass me about, but the, what did I do? Did I forget something? Oh, I'm, oh, forgive me. I forgot something here. It is better to trust in the Lord and put confidence in politicians. Aren't politicians men? It is better to trust in the Lord and put confidence in Donald Trump. It is better to trust in the Lord and put confidence in the government. And aren't they men? It is better to trust in the Lord and put confidence in the Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard. That's man. I'm not misquoting the scripture. All right, maybe women, but mankind. Is not that what you trust is man and not God? America will prove by this man. We put this man in the White House. What happened to God? Oh, that's on Sunday morning. Really? A better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in a man. That includes all your Republicans, all your Democrats, all your army, all your Navy, all every, every man but God. And when it comes to man, the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that includes your pastor. We ought to put our confidence and our trust in God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and not any other man. Don't put no trust in me. I can fail you. I can be deceived. 
and many great men have fallen and been deceived by the devil. If you put your faith in the Lord, if you put your faith in God, you will not be offended. You will not be deceived. You will not be lied to. You will not be put off track. It is better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in princes. You know what princes are? They are people that are in the government. They are under the king, but America doesn't have a king no more. Princes would be Senate and House of Representatives. How's that? We need to get it all Democrat. We need to get it all Republican. We got to get it all Green Party. How about just getting God? How about you do what I do? Say, Lord, come election day, put whatever men and women in the office so the Antichrist will come, so we can be raptured out of here. Dan, uh, Jacob's trouble, the seven years of Jacob's trouble can come by quick, and then the quicker the seven-year tribulation period comes, then the quicker you will come, and the quicker you will come, the quicker you'll be on your horse, and you'll bring Israel into Jerusalem and their nation, and you will be seated as the king of all the world, the king of the king and the lord of the lords in Jerusalem. And the poo-poo with Democrats and the poo-poo with Republicans. I want God and Jesus Christ. That's my confidence. It's better to trust in the Lord. All nations, oh boy, here we go, compass me about. There's the United Nations. All nations, plural. There is the assembly of the United Nations found in New York City. All nations come with me about, but the name of the Lord will I destroy them. That's second advent. The United Nations will be brought down by Jesus Christ. You know what the United Nations will do? I will give you prophecy. I heard a guy went to, oh, there's no prophets in the church age. I'm going to give you a prophecy. The United Nations will turn against the nation of Israel in the time of Jacob's trouble. God will call them goat nations, and Jesus Christ will come and cast them off into hell. They, all the nations, compass me about, yay, that's what the devil said. They compassed me about. They encircled me. The nations and the Antichrist are going to encircle Israel and the Jews in the, in the tribulation period. But the name of the Lord will I destroy them. You want to see something interesting? Revelation 19. I can't find anything interesting in the Old Testament. Revelation 19. Verse 11. Boy, we come to this verse a lot, haven't we? Revelation 19. This is the Lord Jesus Christ. I saw heaven open. Behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F, and True, capital T. And in righteous does he judge and make war. His eyes were a flame as fire. He's angry. And his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and his clothes of the vesture did in blood and his name is called the word of god verse 16 he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords you know how god's going to bring the united nations down by the word of god the word of god mentions assembly of the united nations and that they will be destroyed by the word of God prophecy. When that king of kings and lord of lords comes, the United Nations is going to be put down. That's interesting. Verse 12, they, the, the nations, compass me about like bees. Now, have you ever had, I don't know, a swarm, it's called swarm. You ever have a swarm of bees attack you? 
I have had three times in my life. One time I was a little boy, I opened up an old car and there were bees in the car and they came after me. Another time I had the, the hornets, the yellow jackets, yellow jackets. I was cutting the lawn. I went over their nest. I didn't even know their nest was there. And there was another time. You don't do much when, when a swarm of you Man, you just do the hokey pokey and try to get yourself out of there. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how sore you are. You're going to do dance moves that you never knew you did before with bees. And there was a battle in the Old Testament that God said, I sent the hornet. All right. You got a armor. You're wearing a, a suit of armor. And God sends a couple bees in that armor. <laughs> but he's not talking about sending be bees. He said light bees. A whole bunch of them. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. The, the, the nation. See that thorn bush over there on fire? Put that thing out. Is it out? It's out? That's what the nation is going to be. For in the name, verse 10, in the name, verse 11, in the name, verse 12, in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them, the nation. And Jesus said that. He called them the goat nation. And he said to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will curse them that curse you. I guarantee that's not taught in the public school system. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. That's the nations. The goat nations do not do anything to help Israel. Now the sheep nations and they don't even know what they're doing. I feel like one day you're working at work and you got this coworker and, and you're just getting a well fine, everything's well. And you know, your best buddies, you sit down at lunch and you know, you sell, I mean, you, you, you share your lunch and all that. And then you just find out, you know what? For whatever reason, you both found out you were adopted your parents put you up and you find out you two were brothers and sister or sister and sister or brother and brother. Whoa, I didn't even know. And you read about those stories all the time. I didn't even know we were related. That's what these nations are going to be. When did we help you, Jesus? We helped these people called Jews. Yeah, they're my people. It's going to get so foul in the tribulation period that even the name of the Jewish people are not even going to be referenced to Jehovah. And there are religions today and churches today that say that God's all finished with the Jews. That teaching is going to keep on going into the tribulation period. That there is a famine of the word of God. And there is no knowledge of Israel being God's people. And that when Jesus comes in his name, they don't even know the name of Jesus. And the public school systems are doing a very fine job of not teaching. Don't worry. It'll get much worse. That's my new saying. Outside of scripture. Quote something outside of scripture. Don't worry. It'll only get worse. The Lord is my strength and my song. And it's become my salvation. Look at salvation. Now, for the Jew, who's that Lord? Who do we read about in Revelation 19? Who's that Lord? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And what religion's wrong? Any religion that proclaims Jesus is not God. Who comes and saves Israel? Jesus. Do you read in Revelation that they're going to sing a new song? There it is. They're going to sing the song of Moses, and they're going to sing the new song. No Christian can sing that song. That's like the angels who can't get saved. When Jesus comes for the Jewish people, it is going to bring joy and celebration. 
You think Hosanna and, and cutting down palm trees and casting it before that ass that Jesus came on. You wait till Jesus comes on a horse. And I wonder if that horse is going to talk. Of course, of course. Oh, you got to be old to know that. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacle of the righteous. Plural. Well, who's going to be righteous? Israel. I'll give them a new heart and I'll give them a new spirit. What's the tabernacles there? It's plural. That's the houses of the Jews when they come into Israel through Jesus Christ. The right hand of the Lord. Who is that? Who is seated at the right hand of the Lord today? Does valiantly. That's courageous, brave. We gotta give honor to our brave soldiers. What about the honors of the brave Jesus Christ? How can we honor everything and everyone but Jesus? You don't like me because I kick your gods and lift up the God of Jesus Christ that you profess to be a Christian of and have nothing to do with. Too much Jesus. Not enough Jesus. Can't be not enough Jesus. That's why I sin. That's why I got, if I confess my sin, you know why I have, to, you know why I sin, I got to confess my sin? Because I don't have enough Jesus in my life. You know why you're miserably sinning in your life? You ain't got Jesus at all. Very tiny little silver bit of Jesus. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. What's going to happen to Jesus when he mounts that horse? And becomes king of kings and lord of lords. And he's got many crowns. Tell the Jehovah Witnesses to go take a hike. And you sign that in my name. The right hand of the Lord. Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father, right? Well, that, that's Jesus Christ. Does valiantly again, a verily, verily. Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father is more important than the birthday of Jesus. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. Now he's talking about life on this earth. Because I shall not die. I'm going to declare the works of the Lord while I'm living. Man, while he, I'm going to go tell about Jesus. I'm going to go. Listen, when we die and go to glory, we're singing about Jesus. We're praising about the Lord. The day I die is the day I'm not going to go in all the world and preach the gospel. I'll be singing holy, holy, holy and hallelujah and all whatever we sing to Jesus. Now, the Lord woke me up today. And the Lord waked me up today. I did not die. I'm living. I declared the works of the Lord. We had, a, we had our Bible study in the bar. And I declared the works of the Lord. If I'm to wake up tomorrow morning. I don't know. But if I wake up tomorrow morning. I hope. Well, tomorrow morning is the farmer's market. I hope to go and lift up the works of the Lord. Monday mornings are, are a dead morning to me. If I wake up in the morning, on Monday morning, get up, I don't go anywhere. I hope through the internet, I hope through YouTube, I hope through, I can lift up the Lord. I lift up the Lord even if I don't go anywhere with my Facebook and the internet. I know many Christians who have Facebook and they lift up other things besides Jesus. I exalt Jesus with everything I got, I hope. The Lord has chastened me sore. Ow. That's not the God of the modern. You can't spank your children. Dr. Spock, give them a kiss on the forehead. Don't spank them. Dr. Spock, you need to come and see what the damage your kids are doing. God chastens uh, Hebrews 12 or 13. 
God the Father chastened. Solomon, who had a thousand wives, many children, wrote to us in the book of Proverbs, Spare not the rod, correct thy child. The Bible form, you know why there's riots and looting? Because you did not correct the children. You said, all right, I'll count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Now you can have it. Go have a timeout so you can get angrier and angrier and, and think about what you're going to do when timeout is over with. God chasing. And, and Hebrew says he chastens because he loves them. Proverbs says you don't love your child if you don't chasten them. You know what's wrong with the parenting today? Thanks to the public school system, thanks to DCF, thanks to Spock, thanks to psychology, parents don't love their children because they don't chasten them. And the Bible says that. But he has not given me over to death. This chasing didn't kill you. It made you sore. It made you <laughs> made you think. But death can come by you're not listening to chasing. Judah in the time of, of Jeremiah, they just got, you know, he told Jeremiah, don't even pray for him. Babylon's coming. Try to warn them, but I know they're not going to listen. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. Amen. This gate of the Lord, in which the righteous shall enter. The righteousness gate. And there's a gate in Jerusalem waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come through. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. Didn't, didn't we read over in Psalms 115 about the dumb idols that don't hear? Well, God's not a dumb idol. He hears. And God never needs to clean his ears out. Verse 22, quoted by Jesus, speaking about Jesus. The stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner. And that stone is spoken about Daniel. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he comes, he's going to grind them to powder. Like Moses ground the golden calves to powder. And there was another king in Judah. He grind the works of, of all the works of powder. Have you destroyed your God? The powder? This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. What's the Lord's doing? The second advent. Man, all the signs and wonders and healings that Jesus done on the first advent. Man, wait to see what the Jews are going to watch when Jesus comes in the second advent. The destruction of all the enemies of Israel. And unlike Joshua, who brought them in the promised land, when Jesus brings them in the promised land, victory. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, except for Monday. Oh, Monday. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't like Mondays. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I still won't like Monday. Then you're defying the Bible. Say now. That's what they're going to be saying in the tribulation. I beseech thee, God. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, verily, verily. I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Second Advent. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. 
25, Lord, come on, Lord, come. Verse 26 is the second advent. God is the Lord. Amen. Which has shown us light. Guess who that light is? Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. So God is the Lord. Bind the sacrifice with cords. That's what they would do. They would tie up the animals. Even the horns of the altar. That's what they do. They bring that animal to the altar. Those horns were on the altar. They would tie that animal to that. So the animal didn't get away. And then the sinner would have to lay his hands on that animal. And the sinner would have to kill that animal. Thou art my God. Ain't good if it's your mother's God. I will praise thee. Thou art my God. I will exalt thee. Lift up. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. That sounds familiar. It's what we read earlier. For his mercy endureth there. That's how the how the psalm started i'm going to end the same way of everything i'm going to give thanks to the lord and then next time psalms 119 come and hear the word of god